Hello and welcome to another episode of the Auto Medic Show, reaching you from the studios of NTA2 Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Ben and I have LJ here with me as usual. Good morning, Good morning. to you, LJ. Good morning. And uh, today, what is our topic of discourse? Uh, we're looking at uh, some possible lights you could have on the dashboard. Yeah, and uh, there are so many lights on the dashboard. Yes. So people need to know exactly what those lights represent. Yes. We'll be showing you those lights and what they represent and what you need to do when you see any of those lights after the short break. Don't go away. Strong communication skills, good diagnostic skills, problem solving skills, solid work ethics, strong technical aptitude, and up to date technology. Watch Automedics on your reach out station as we prefer clear code solutions to your automobile problems. Automedics showing every Wednesday at 11 30 a.m. with a repeat broadcast at 11 30 a.m. on Saturdays. Automedics. The best ends on your automobile. All right, welcome back again. It's still Automatic Show, reaching you from the studios of NTA to Victoria Island, Lagos. And uh, LJ, we're uh, talking about uh, service or what do you call them now? Maintenance required and yeah, all those lights. Maintenance, lot of people, minor light yeah, and all that. Yeah. That, yeah. Those are malfunction indicator lamps. You have the malfunction indicator lamps, the service yeah. reminders, yeah. and um, the system operation indicators as well. Okay. So uh, we're going to be looking at all that this morning. You need to know the different categories of lights yeah. and by their colors. Yeah. Uh, by color red, yeah. you should know that this signifies danger, Critical. which is critical. Yeah. Most times it's a malfunction indicator or it's uh, an emergency situation that you just have to stop. Mm. That's what those red lights indicate. Then when it's amber color, it's warning you the car could still move around on a limpo mode where it's not fully working but it can get you to where you can have it repaired. Okay. It will come in amber color. Most yeah, times, yeah. those are simple warning lamps, like service reminder. It's reminding you that the car is due for lubrication service or filter service or any of the services. Yeah. But when it's reminding you, it doesn't mean the car is going to break down right now. Yeah. It means you can still drive to where you have that service carried out. Now, those are service reminders. Then the operational lights are usually in the blue color, the green color. Yeah. Uh, for instance, um, some people complain that when I'm driving, once I start accelerating mm. and I take my foot off the accelerator, and a light comes on that says ECO, yeah. which is actually telling you the vehicle is in economy mode. Yeah. So every time you take your foot off the accelerator, you're not accelerating, and the car is still moving. At that point, the fuel system cuts off. And then so as you economy. use the momentum yeah. of the vehicle to move around. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have different uh, explanation to this light. Uh, check. When it comes up on your dashboard, yeah. What does it really signify here? Yeah. Okay. Because I know a lot of people have been driving with this. Yeah, some on, people yeah. have had different um, mystical explanation to it yeah. over the years. Some will tell you it's the injector light, it's the catalyst light, yeah. it's the light that you always find on vehicles that come from abroad yeah. and all that. Uh, some, now, even, some people even say the light, if it's not there, the vehicle won't run. Yeah, that yeah. the vehicle will not run if yeah. you don't have the light on. Now, all these are all impressions. Mm. And the only time those impressions can actually stay with you is if you don't read your owner's manual. If you go through your owner's manual, you'll see that it will clearly state there that when you see the check sign, yeah. it signifies that there is a, mal a malfunction with the engine management system or the powertrain system. Okay. Which means... Now, the powertrain system, when you're talking about the powertrain uh, train system, okay. you need to break it down. Yeah, yeah, we need to break that down because truly, when you say engine management system, yeah. you can clearly know from the goal that that has to do with the engine. Mm -hmm. But when you say powertrain management system, it means that you're not talking of just engine alone. Mm -hmm. You're talking of all the components that come together to bring the vehicle's power. To give you drive. To give you the drive okay. that the vehicle actually provides. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll be looking at your engine, your transmission. And okay. sometimes your um, transfer case and yeah. all the others, mm. they can be put in the same category as your powertrain system. As okay. your powertrain system. So you have powertrain system fault codes, powertrain system control units. Sometimes they can use a unified control unit that controls just the whole powertrain system. And that is the one that is referred to as the uh, PCM. As a PCM. Okay. Then sometimes, other times, you just have the engine management being different yeah. and the transmission management being different transfer case being different. Yeah. Now, whichever one it is, 
when you see the check sign on or the main uh, the, the main, uh, service engine soon yeah sometimes they use service engine soon depending on the model of the vehicle you're driving yeah. uh, depending on the make too you can see service engine soon you can see um, check you can see check engine you can see ch engine malfunction any of all these is an indication that you have a pr problem with the engine or the power train system right. and the first step to take will be to run a scan Okay then, uh, just hold it there on the scan. Uh, we'll be back after this short break. Please don't go away. So you can actually drive your vehicle without engine oil for 50 kilometers. This is very, very achievable, all thanks to Polytron. Still a doubt in Thomas, let our technician prove this to you. We are about to drain the engine oil of this car to see the power of Polytron, the product that has nanotechnology buried in it, because we believe that Polytron is already working in it. And after doing that, put the car together and we'll drive it around. Now that you have seen the power of Polytron, buy a bottle today to increase the lifespan of your engine, reduce fuel consumption, save cost also on expensive repairs. Welcome back to the Automatic Show. And uh, we're still talking about uh, my function indicator lamps on your instrument cluster, otherwise called the dashboard, and uh, what you need to do when you see any of those uh, malfunction indicators. Yes. And uh, while we're doing this too, you can also call in uh, into the program and tell us exactly what problems you're having with your vehicle. We are, we will be too glad to answer your questions on this show. And the numbers to call are zero seven zero one six two seven two zero two five. 0701-627-2025. With that number, you get on to the show with us here. Now, LJ, talking about our malfunction indicators on the yeah. dashboard. So, we just spoke about the, the check, check engine. engine light. Now, um, what is the relationship between the check and service engine soon? Because on some vehicles, you see service engine soon, and that is, uh, uh, I mean, sometimes misleading yes. to he, the vehicle he, owner. Yeah, because the owner thinks... Is to is go do service. Go and do a service. And yeah. after doing a service, he still sees that the surface engine light is still, still on, on and yeah. he's asking, but what? I just did the service. Yeah. Now, the thing here is, uh, before um, the OBD conformity and um, the SAE the standards. And standards and all that, mm -hmm. different manufacturers had different ways of putting this information out to people or to the operator of the vehicle. Yeah. Now, there was a time when it was agreed by certain factions of the automotive industry to use service engine soon. soon and some were sticking with check yeah. but as it is presently they are all sticking with check engine mm. or check or the engine symbol yeah you have that engine hologram there that indicates that there is a problem with the engine yeah so any of all that that you see on your instrument cluster anytime you see either the engine sign the check sign or the check engine or the service engine soon yeah. it's still saying the same thing okay the engine system has a fault now the step you carry after now will determine how the fault will be re rectified. If you don't run a scan, yeah. it will be difficult to find out what the problem is because most times it's not something you can just physically pinpoint. Identify that this you can, is a problem. Yes, yes, it can be difficult to identify. It. So you get a scan tool and communicate with the vehicle's computer that actually put out the indicator. Yeah. Because the computer will have registered the fault and then put on the indicator. So. When you communicate with the computer, the computer will give you information as regards what made it put on that indicator. So then the fix can be easy because based on the information the computer gives you, you can go to the area the that computer has, has pointed out to yeah. and carry out um, a visual inspection there and you'll find some of the components that are out of place or worn out of tolerance that you can just easily take out, have repaired or replaced and then erase the fault code and the yeah. light goes off. You drive around and it doesn't come back on again because mm. the fault has been rectified. Okay, you know, you know the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm banging on this uh, check engine and service engine soon because um, it, there are a lot of um, you know myths that are associated with it. But let's uh, take this call. Uh, someone is uh, calling in. Uh, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello. Welcome to Automedics. Good morning. Welcome to Automedics. My name is Benga. Uh, Benga, you're welcome. Hello. Hello. Benga, we can hear you. Hello, Benga, are you there? Okay. Hello, Benga, are you still there? Hello. Hello. 
Hello, Benga, we can hear you. Hello, hello, sir. Uh, well, I think uh, we're having some um, you know, audio issues here. Uh, right. It's not hearing us properly. So, um, the check light service engine, so before we go to the other uh, lights, now let's just wrap it up here. Now, you are saying that uh, the moment you see the check engine light or service engine, so the first thing to do is to it's go run the scan. Yeah. But I've actually seen a lot of people who prefer to, okay, change the spark plug, uh, change the spark coils, do repairs before they go for a scan. From experience, that has always been a blind approach to rectifying the problem because at the end of the day, you find out that probably even the items you change were not even the, the least. They're not related to They're not related to why the check engine light is on. Yeah. And that is working based on assumption. Let's mm -hmm. assume that if we change the spark plug, the light will go off. Yeah. Let's assume that the light doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the car parks you by the roadside. Mm. So, based on assumption, you can't do anything. You have to be okay. able to run a scan. Now, let's take this call now. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Automatics. Hello. Hello, good morning. Uh, okay, I think we're having some little technical issues. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Apart from the check engine lights, yes. there are other lights that are on. Uh, the other time we talked about the ones that come in red. Yeah. For instance, the brake warning, Critical. where you see its brake, yeah. or you see the symbol of a brake system yeah. with an exclamation mark in the middle, yeah. or the tire, where you see the tire indicator yeah. that is indicating uh, the tire patch yeah. on the ground. Yeah. That and is then like the watermark sign. Yes, yeah. the watermark sign, mm -hmm. and then with the tire sign there. Yeah. With the exclamation now, in it. With the exclamation in it. Yeah. Tire, brakes, um, the oil, yeah. the oil light, oil warning. oil warning light, yeah. all these are critical. Most times they come in red. Mm. When you get them in red, pack and wait for a while. Carry out some visual inspection to make sure every other thing is okay. All before right. you Let, let's take this call before we come back to that. Hello? Okay. Um, Single back before you ahead. continue your yeah. journey, yeah. pack and be certain that everything is okay yeah. or everything is still manageable because when those lights come on it's usually indicate that yes, the, a critical the, 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 the level of the measure of um, danger is high yeah that's why the red light will come on for instance the oil yeah when the oil light starts to flash like that mm. that's an indicator an indicator that the, the engine is probably not having oil enough supply oil at all. supply yeah. or there is not enough oil in the engine at all okay now we, we, uh, put this vis a vis the red light showing the red eyes with the oil can sign, yes. and then the uh, the amber, the uh, yellow light for the oil. For the oil, what is the, the difference the, between the yellow the light? Might just indicate that the oil is low. The oil level. The oil level is low. Okay. So you need to top it up. Okay. But when it's the red light, usually it indicates that there is not on, there is not enough oil pressure, okay. which could be as a result of very critically low oil level, mm. or the oil pump being bad, mm. or a component inside the engine. Has broken or is damaged mm. so at that point that's why when it's the yellow you can still manage yeah. but once it goes red same thing happens with the charging system yeah same thing happens with the electronic steering system yeah if you have an electronic steering system when it's yellow you could still drive the car around and i still feel that it's i soft. still feel that there's um, soft, softness in the steering yeah. but the minute the steering goes red the steering sign on the instrument cluster goes red you see the steering goes hard yeah and that indicates that there is a complete, complete breakdown. Failure, yeah. Yeah. So you have to go by the colors. Now, when it's amber, some of the things that will come in amber are usually warning. For instance, your meant required, yeah. maintenance required. Yeah. Now, I, I, I will go there. Maintenance required, service engine soon. Uh, you know, a lot of people have confusion with this too. Yes. Because, okay, uh, maintenance required like comes on, the service engine soon like comes on. I go do my service. Maintenance required light is still on. Service engine soon light is still on. What do I do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, service engine soon light, well, like we said before, yeah. refers to having to do with the engine, the powertrain system. Yeah. Meaning you have to run a scan. Yeah, exactly. But for the maintenance required light, it's um, categorized in the service reminder indicators. Okay. It's one of the service reminder indicators. Now, it's reminding you that the engine is due for maintenance. maintenance. The maintenance we're talking of here is not a repair. Mm. It's more like taking out service pa service parts, replacement replace parts, replace yeah. them, such as oil, mm. the filter, 
um, looking at your air filter, yeah. check mm -hmm. your spark plugs and all that. Those are things you could actually do when it's telling you uh, maintenance required. Now, apart from the oil and the filter, every other thing can be checked during this period. Okay. Just checked, not replaced. But yeah. the oil and filter has to be replaced. Mm. And afterwards, you have to reset the reminder. That is so the that SRI. It, yes. Mm. So that it reminds you again the, the next, next time, time it is for yeah. Yes. So the, that is the difference there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Different. Now, uh, the brake light, the brake warning light, you spoke about that. Now the tire, that is the TPMS, Tire Pressure Monitoring System. Yes, this is one complex system that a lot of people have found it very difficult to manage yeah. for a very long time. What this system does is, on each wheel, it has a module, which is in the form of a sensor. Okay. It has its control unit and everything inside it, and has a battery mm. inside the tire. Now, mm. the battery... Now, you need to tell them where it is located, because... It is actually looking, located at the valve, at the, the head the of the valve, valve. The tire yeah, valve because when itself. you say there's a battery, there's a model, people will be looking like something very big inside the tire. There are no wires connected. It's yeah. a small item yeah. that is just attached to the tire valve yeah. inside the rim. Now, when you have air in the tire, there is a pressure sensor within it yeah. that would measure the air and transmit, and transmit it through... Um, Radio. Radio wave. Yeah. It transmits it to its main control unit inside the car. So while you are driving, radio in uh, signals are actually being transmitted yeah. from the wheels to, to the, the control model. unit. Yeah. That gives the control unit a good idea of the tire pressures okay. on all the four or five wheels as you're driving. Mm. Now while driving, if any wheel starts to reduce its air pressure, yeah. the control unit sees it and immediately warns you with the indicator yeah. on the instrument cluster that that wheel one wheel yeah, is pressure. having a low pressure. Yeah. Now, in some very sophisticated um, systems, yeah. it will actually show you the particular wheel that yeah, is having that is issue. Yeah, yes. okay. And then in other systems, it will just give the indicator. So you have to come down, go around, and f confirm the wheel that, that the has that problem. Yeah. But the biggest confusion out there is a case where somebody tells you, I have inflated all the tires, yeah. and yet the light is still on. Exactly. The light will remain on for two reasons. One, Either the system is not an auto reset system, okay. where now, once you, you inflate, the, inflate the tire, the... it takes it and then resets itself. Yeah. If it is not, that means you will have to reset it. Okay. There are usually locations where they put the reset button, mm. then you touch, hold it for a few seconds, and, and the system it resets takes itself. Setting, yeah. it takes a new setting. Or you have one wheel that has a tire valve that the valve battery in this um, module has gone low okay. and it's no longer transmitting radio signals to On the control unit. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you will need to change the tire valve. Okay. I mean, you know, um, uh, issues like this have been coming on, you know, um, inflate your tires, the tire pressures are okay. I've seen a situation whereby people will increase above the uh, manufacturer recommended pressure still there bring it back normal so when you have issues like that the first thing to do is still the scan still run, only run a scan tool that will be able to tell you the scan tool will tell you the Which tire way? valve that yeah. has a problem mm. now once you know the one that has a problem you don't need to go around checking all the others mm. you take that one out a vulcanizer takes out the valve yeah. and you get another valve install it but most times once you put another valve you will have to register program it or ID. register it yeah. to the onboard computer Okay. So it identifies that you have that valve. If not for that, you will have cases where when you park in a parking lot and other cars are parked close to, it. Close to you, yeah. their transmitters will be transmitting to your system. And so, that will create confusion. Exactly. So, so that is why it needs to be registered. It needs to be registered. Okay. So as it's only your car's transmission yeah. that it receives. Mm. Every other vehicle's own, it won't collect it. Yeah. It will only accept the transmissions that it has identified already. Okay, now um, another critical thing here that shows the red light, yes. the EPS. But before we go on that, we'll go on a short break and when we come back, we'll be talking about lights on your instrument cluster that you need to take seriously. Don't go away. Strong communication skills, good diagnostic skills, problem solving skills, solid work ethics, strong technical aptitude, and up-to-date technology. Watch Automedics on your reach out station as we provide clear code solutions to your automobile problems. Automedics, showing every Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. with a repeat broadcast at 11.30 a.m. on Saturdays. Automedics, the best ends on your automobile. Do you know that you can actually drive
drive your vehicle without engine oil for 50 kilometers. This is very, very achievable, all thanks to Polytron. Still a doubt in Thomas, let our technician prove this to you. We are about to drain the engine oil of this car to see the power of Polytron, the product that has nanotechnology buried in it, because we believe that Polytron is already working in it. And after doing that, put the car together and we'll drive it around. Now that you have seen the power of Polytron, buy a bottle today to increase the lifespan of your engine, reduce fuel consumption, save cost also on expensive repair. Welcome back to Automatic Show and uh, we, on the last lap, let's talk about EPS. That's another uh, indicator. Exactly. Electronic uh, power, power steering. steering. A lot now, of vehicles are coming with that now. Yeah, a lot of vehicles are coming with that. Even some manufacturers have even scrapped the idea of using um, hydraulic the power hydraulic power steering and yeah. all the others. So they are strictly using the electronic power steering system. Yeah. Now, electronic power steering system on different cars can come in different um, forms. Yeah. The indicators can be different. Yeah. Some of them will tell you EPS. Some of them will tell you PS. Yeah. P now, slash S. P slash S. Whichever yeah. one it is, it's indicating that the vehicle has an electronic power steering system. Yeah. Now, with vehicles that have an electronic power steering system, you want to know when the steering has a problem or not. Yeah. Because it's no longer the hydraulic where you can look at the oil and say, oh, the oil is low. Let me yeah, top or it. Leaking. Or there is leak. Yeah. Now, now, what happens basically is you have um, your steering wheel that is motorized. Yeah. This time, a motor drives it to whichever direction you're going to. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing is sure here. This system works with the ABS system, which controls the wheels, okay. which means that for the EPS to work properly, all the four wheel speed sensors have to be working. Okay. Now, in cases where you have um, some wheel speed sensors failing, yeah. that could put the EPS indicator on. Whilst the ABS also is on, yeah. it's, it will only come in amber, amber, warning you the EPS has a problem. Mm. It's not that the EPS has a problem directly, yeah, it's because right. there is a wheel that has a, a sense of failure yeah. that is making the EPS on. So all you have to do at this point is run a scan, fix the wheel problem, EPS right. will go off. It's different from when your EPS comes red. Mm. When it comes red, that means there is a critical problem. Which means the EPS system itself has a problem. Has a problem. Yeah. So you need to, at this point, run a scan as well, find out what is wrong with the EPS. Sometimes the problems can be really, really critical, mm. up to the point where you might need to change the whole rack or change the complete motor assembly, yeah. which is usually a huge makeup of the steering column. Mm. The biggest part of the steering column, actually, is when the EPS is attached to it. So you change all that, then there will still be need to reprogram, recalibrate, mm. yeah. so the system can work properly. Mm. But the idea here is always look out for that light. If the light stays on, run a scan and find out what the problem is because when an EPS locks you up, it yeah. can be very difficult to That's turn. what I call muzzle pull. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, uh, we, we just have to end it here because we have no time without a lot more lights on the dashboard, is, you know, or instrument cluster. Yes. Uh, a lot of people need to take a... Uh, uh, We've not even talked about the good ones. Yeah, the, the good ones, yeah. But uh, it's good with starting with the critical ones that people need to be aware of. Yes. So, um... When we come back next week, uh, we will be trying to give you more information about your vehicle. But for now, we have to go and uh, keep listen, uh, keep viewing automatics. Uh, there will be a repeat broadcast of, uh, by Saturday, so uh, keep it there with us and keep uh, calling too. Uh, when we are on the show, we'll be able to give you in-depth analysis of your questions, what, what you're having, uh, the challenges you're having with your vehicle. We'll be able to analyze that on this program. Till we come your way again, do have a pleasant time. Bye-bye for now.